Hello, Popper fans! This is Mythonical, and you're joining me for round six of the sixth Popper Challenge series. This opening hand is a very sketchy one. Uh, there is two Thraben Inspectors that could get played, but without a second land, I wouldn't even be able to draw the cards off of the clues. If I was on the draw, depending on how I was feeling, I may keep a hand like this. But on the play, I feel like this is completely unkeepable. We really do need to make sure we're hitting our second and third land drop, preferably getting up to four for cards like Pestilence. So we're going to ship this one back. This hand is a little bit better. We do have two lands, but the only spell we can cast is a Doomblade. Uh, White Source does completely open up this hand, so there, I'm pretty sure this is a keepable, especially with the Scry. And we go ahead and keep that. Planes on top. Perfect. We're in this game. Gonna start off with the uh, Bajuka Bog just to make sure we're getting the tap land out of the way. Delver Secrets. We're just gonna get that out of the way now. Uh, we could get dazed, and we do. But I don't feel like anything we played there was gonna get dazed. We're gonna be able to get down an Avon Rift Watcher. That should be able to stop attacks for a little while. Uh, but he's got a pretty good Air Force as soon as those Delvers flip. I'm going to try and play the Crypt Rats. I'm going to hope, well, he ends up having a second daze. Basically, he didn't ha he didn't daze the Rift Watcher, so I was thinking, uh, maybe he doesn't have a daze. Turns out, he did. Probably drew it off the Fairy Miscreant, was my assumption. So now we do have to try and reset our Rift Watcher. Unfortunately, if he has a Spell Stutter Sprite or a Counter Spell, that's not going to get to reset. So things are not looking too good here. He just seems to have all the answers today. Uh, at this point, I'm basically hoping he'll attack so I can at least get some value out of the Rift Watcher. He doesn't end up doing that. And now we're basically priced into trying to hope this Pestilence resolves. If it does, we at least get to board wipe next turn, and it does, so that is good news for us. Going to take our beats. And we're going to get down the Pestilence here, or the Monarch here. I don't... Uh, looking back on it, I th I was... Basically, I wanted to make sure I kept the Pestilence, but I think it was definitely a better play to board wipe on their turn. Uh, I feel like this was not a good idea, looking at it now. Because that basically gives him the Monarch, and now that he has a Spire Golem down, if he can counter the Doom Blade, it's not looking too good. Also, drawing two Pestilences in a row isn't great for us either. Now we're going to go for the attack, and hopefully the sticks. Unfortunately, he has a Vapor Snag. That's not good for us. He's going to go for the attack, and I'm just going to use the Pestilence now to remove both of his creatures. It'll prevent him from playing a creature, and hopefully we can just replay the Palace Sentinel to get back the Monarchy. Thankfully, that sticks. He did end up getting a couple extra cards off of it, but hey, this looks like we may have winning chances again. We are down to 6 life, but thankfully he's not on the red burn plan. He did have a spell setter sprite to flash in, but we did end up getting a disfigure off of the monarch, which is good for us. I'm going to attack in here just because there isn't really much else I can do there. But he is going to get the monarch back with the attack, and this is going to put me down to 2 life, so... Since I've drawn all four Pestilences, which is a really bad draw, by the way, I don't have the removal spells or the flyers to get in the way of these fire uh, golems. I basically need an Avon Rift Watchers to have a chance here, or multiple removal spells. He's going to cash in a Spell Stutter Sprite just to prevent me from getting the Monarch back, which is one less draw. I'm going to play this. I need an Avon Rift Watcher. No, did not get it. So we're going to lose this one. Last round, first game, we were hoping to draw at least one Pestilence, and this time, within the top 20 cards, we drew all four, so sometimes things do not line up all that well. We'll jump into game two. Hopefully our luck will go a little bit better. For sideboarding, I don't like the Palace Sentinels since they have a lot of flyers, and especially with the Vapor Snags and whatnot, counter spells, if they manage to get the Monarch, as you saw it, does make it difficult, although I feel like I did misplay and gave him the Monarch really easily. I'm also going to pull out the Prismatic Strands. I don't particularly like it in the Mono Blue matchup. It's a much better against the Blue Red where he gets to counter their removal spells. 
And I'm going to be bringing in both Doom Blades just to remove some more of their creatures. I'm also going to be bringing in the Duresses and the Raven Scrime just to attack their hand in general and to reduce their just uh, to attack their hand over the long game, especially if I'm drawing additional lands. With that, we're going to jump into our opening hand. And this is a reasonable keep. We've got some hand disruption, removal, and a guardian that we can get down, so we're going to go ahead and keep that. Mulligan to six. Uh, that may help us out a little bit. Getting down the Fairy Miscreant, I'm just going to get rid of it. I don't want to be hit by a ninja if possible. And we're going to go for some Duress. He has a counter spell. There was a chance that he was going to spell Setter Sprite, but I did have the Snuff out to deal with that, and I was playing around Days. So now we're basically stuck on a whole bunch of removal spells and a Guardian that we're hoping to cast at some point. But our opponent isn't doing anything, so we'll also not do anything. Playing the Core Skyfisher, we're just going to bounce the land and gain a life. This gives us at least a little bit of pressure, and it's a really good card against Delver in general. He's going to be able to get some redraws here, that's fine. And plays a Delver. I'm going to go ahead and try and remove that Delver. He has a counter spell for it, but that is fine. I'm going to try and... I'm actually apparently playing... Oh yes, so what my idea was, I wanted to see what the top card was. And I wanted to see if he was going to attack to offer the trade, because I've got a lot of removal spells over the long haul. He has an annul for the dead weight, but that's fine. I'm just going to Doom Blade it and start getting for some more damage again. He flashes back his Deep Analysis, so he's basically undone his mulligan quite easily. He's getting down a ton of cards. And I do need to get rid of this Spire Bluff, or Spire Golem. I'm going to cast a Chainer's Edict just to see what he is willing to sacrifice. And then I cast the Snuff Out. Get in for some damage, bounce her land. Like, things aren't looking the greatest, but we are going to be able to start flashbacking our Chainer's Edicts to keep them off of creatures over the next little while. So while we are down in cards in, down in, cards in hand, we still have stuff going on. So we're going to cast one of our Chainer's Edicts. He's just going to play a Spellsetter Sprite, which is going to get eaten by it. So it's still basically a one for one out of our graveyard. Gush, he's getting his card advantage back online. So just got to kind of hope he's drawn air. That's basically the only thing we got going for us. Casting our next Chainer's Edict. He does have a Daze. We could have waited a turn to play around that if we really needed to, but... That's fine. I'm going to start playing all of our Guardians of the Guild pack. Spire Golem can block them, but he feels like it's worthwhile still to counterspell one of them. That's fine. He doesn't really seem to have much going on, so I'm assuming he's on counter magic and the like. I'm just going to go ahead and attack. Uh, to be able to get some damage in, and I try and cast this. Sure enough, he has more counter magic. I'm going to flash back the last Chainer's Edict. He's going to, once again, use a Spell Setter Sprite just to sack that to the Edict instead. And I'm going to continue trying to chip in for two damage. Here, I can also choose to use the Disfigure, and I'm going to do that at the end. But he uses a Vapor Snag to keep it around. Um, once again, just going to get in for the two damage that I've been doing every turn and cast the Rift Watcher. This is setting me up to have lethal next turn. He hasn't played anything, so I am going to go for it. I have no reason not to. He could have a Spell Stutter here and then be able to eat the Thraben of Spectre and Chump Lock, and that seems to be what he's going to be doing. So after he does that, I'm going to Core Skyfisher, reset the Avon. So now I have four lethal threats and he has one creature, so yes, we do win game number two. All right, we still can with, win with this deck. Excellent. Jump into game three. We're going to actually just make sure we didn't make any additional changes in the sideboard. We did not. All right. Our opening hand is keepable. We've got some stuff to attack the hand. We do have the Pestilence, which if we can resolve it is a good card. 
Crypt Rats can also come in handy. And of course Skyfish is just really good in general against all their flyers, so we're going to go ahead and keep that. Turn 1 Delver is not really what we wanted to see. We don't have a way to kill it right away, so it could start... If it flipped turn 1, it could have been pretty bad. Thankfully it didn't, but he does still have double Miscreant, so... He's got his Air Force online. We did, cash, we did cast the Duress to take a look at what he had, and this is what he had. Uh, so I took the Vapor Snag, mainly because I am planning on getting this Crypt Rats out, and I wanted to just make sure it was going to wipe the board and he couldn't reset it. Um, it may have been correct to take some of the card draw, but... Since he had quite a bit of it, he's going to be able to go through that anyways. And the curse isn't going to really do much against my deck. It may stop a core Skyfisher, but I'm not too worried about that. So let me know if you feel like a different card should have been taken. We're starting to take our beats. Uh, drawing a land is really good because we did need to get that. I was able to turn it into a swamp so that way I could use the snuff out on one of the cards. I didn't want to use the disfigure because he could have used a spell stutter sprite and countered it. He's going to get in for two damage. Not much I can do about that. I really do need a land here. I didn't get it, which is unfortunate. I'm just going to go for some Raven's Crime to pull cards out of his hand. And there is an argument that maybe I should have been disfiguring at some point, but he goes for the ninja here. I'm going to try and use it now. And he drew a second ninja. So the two cards in hand that we didn't know about are two ninjas. Very unfortunate for us, our opponent's drawing quite well right now. I'm just going to get out a core Skyfisher so that way I can block the ninja or the fairy, hope, hoping that this will slow down our opponent. He has a gush, so he's able to refill his hand. Things are still going quite poorly for us. I'm going to try and resolve one of our uh, many spells. The Crypt Rats would be good, but he ends up having a spell setter. I guess I should have aimed for one of the Pestilences, but I was trying to play around Days. Yeah, I guess uh, Pestilence would have been the better choice since we have so many of them. Once again, again Pestilence flooded. Gonna use the Core Skyfisher to block, but we're now down to three life. Really did need the uh, Crypt Rats to stick to be able to wipe away all the X1s. But without that, if he attacks with everybody, we're going to lose. He sees the line, attacks with everybody, and we do end up losing this one. So we're currently 3-3, and we're going to fight for our chance of a top 32. I hope you'll join me for that in round 7.